Hey, praise the Lord. This is Clinton. For those of you who are in Christ Jesus, I'm Brother Clinton. And I want to impress you with some knowledge right now. I want to tell you that I know something about you. Wherever you are in the world, regardless of your age, gender, uh, ethnicity, financial status, um, regardless of, of any other fact about you, I'm going to tell you that you are one of two things. You are either a sinner or you're a saint. You're either one or the other. You're not both. You can't be both. You're either one or the other. If you're a sinner, then you're someone who is under the curse of sin um, because we were all born under the curse of sin. The scripture says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. Um, and we were all born under this curse of sin because Adam, our first father, sinned and brought this curse of death upon us for the Lord God said that if he would eat of the tree of the, the knowledge of good and evil in the midst of the garden that in that day that he eat it thereof he would surely die and he did take and eat of that tree and so, so he brought death upon himself and upon his seed and, and we inherited from him all those who are born on the face of the earth inherited that curse of death from Adam so if you're of Adam if you're a son of Adam you were born a sinner the scripture says in the 51st Psalm, in, in sin my mother hath conceived me, I was shaken in iniquity. Okay. So either you're a sinner or you're a saint. What is a saint? A saint is a person who has heard and obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ and been redeemed from the power of sin so that he is no longer a sinner. Does that mean that that person cannot any, any longer sin? It's not possible for him to sin anymore? No, of course not. But it does mean that he's not a sinner anymore. Let me give you an example. If you are, um, say you're a, a dentist, okay, and I take you out into my backyard and I put a bucket of paint in your hand and a paintbrush, and I say, I'd like you to paint this fence for me. And you, uh, well, you're not, you're not used to painting. You don't, uh, you don't necessarily like it or do it for a living, but you do it because I asked you to, I guess, and you paint my fence. Does that make you a painter? No. It doesn't make you a painter. You're still a dentist. That's what you do for a living. That's what you know how to do. That's what you do on a regular basis. You fix people's teeth. Okay? You're probably never going to paint anything again. Uh, you just did it because I asked you to. You just did it one time. That doesn't make you a painter. Okay? If you are a Christian and the devil comes along and tempts you with something and you get weak and you and you forget who you are for a moment and you break down and you commit a sin does that make you a sinner? no it does not it makes you a transgressor of the law until you come to the Lord and confess your sin and turn from it and he forgives you and cleanses you again from all unrighteousness as it's written in the scripture um, but you are still a saint okay? you are a saint who has transgressed the law and you need to confess it to the Lord Jesus Christ and get it forgiven and go on a sinner is someone who lives in sin all day long and up through the night. Someone who lives in sin, is happy with it, is content with it, um, has no remorse about it, has no conscience of it. He, he doesn't sit all day long and say, oh, I can't believe I'm living in sin. I, I don't want to do this anymore. Why do I keep doing it? If a person is doing that, that means that God is calling him and he needs to come and obey the gospel of Christ. But until he obeys the gospel of Christ, he will be a sinner. Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Because this body, this mortal body, is filled with sin, sinful lusts in its members. And except for the law of the Spirit of Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, there is no way that we can have power over this, the law of sin and death which wars in our members. So if you're a sinner, then you're not a saint. If you're a sinner, then you're not a Christian. If you're a Christian, then you're not a sinner. You can't be both at the same time. Those people who have heard this this false teaching or by these these false paid entertainers, they say, well, I'm just a sinner saved by grace, and we're all sinners, and you're going to sin every day, and you just have to tell God at the end of the day that you're sorry for your sins, and he'll forgive you. Those people are lying to you, but you don't have to live in sin every day. Sin doesn't have to be your master. You can come to the Lord Jesus Christ and have a new master. Praise the Lord. And I want to share with you a passage of the scripture, which oftentimes sounds very hard to people in the denominational churches, because they don't understand it, because they've been told that they're all sinners which they are because they haven't obeyed the gospel of Christ. But at the same time, they've been told that they're Christians and sinners simultaneously. 
And so they read this passage of Scripture and it doesn't make any sense to them. And that's why there's a lot of commentary. In fact, in the study Bible that I have, and I don't recommend study Bibles, but this one was sent to me many years ago and I have a lot of notes in it, so this is my kind of like my study Bible. But this is a this was edited by a Greek man named Spiro Sodiates. And you can see that on this page, there's a huge long commentary. Let me see if I can get it in front of the camera. There's a huge long commentary on this passage of scripture. You don't need this commentary. All you need to, knew, to do is to know the Lord Jesus Christ and obey his gospel, and it's perfectly simple. But I'm going to read to you from 1 John chapter 3, verses 6 through 10. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Whosoever abideth in him, of course that means in Jesus Christ, sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Period. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God neither he that loveth not his brother. This is one of the reasons that I love 1 John, and I stay in 1 John a lot, because it's so black and white. It's so perfectly set forth. There's no gray area. There's no area to be confused about. <clears throat> There's no area that needs clarification. It's just, it's just written, pure and simple, truth. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Okay? Now, it doesn't say, Whosoever abideth in him can never sin again. It says, Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. If you're abiding in Jesus Christ, you're staying in him, just like Noah stayed in the ark when the flood was on the earth. Noah didn't get wet. It's like kind of like saying, Noah stayed in the ark, so he didn't get wet. If you abide in Jesus Christ, you're not going to sin. Okay, Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Because there is no sin in him. He's not a sinner. There was no sin in him. He did no sin. So if you're abiding in him, you're not going to sin. Okay? Well, you might say, well, everybody sins every day. We, have, we all have thoughts that are sinful. Let me tell you something. You can't control what thoughts come into your head. But you can control what you do with them. So if you're sitting somewhere and, and, and a thought comes into your head about something sinful, and you cast it down and, and, and cause your thoughts to be, to be focused on the Word of God, you haven't sinned just because a thought came into your mind that wasn't clean. But if you sit there and a thought comes into your mind that's not clean and all of a sudden you start meditating on it saying, yeah, 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 then eventually you wind up doing that or speaking that and then it becomes sin. Okay, It's the things that come out of your mouth that defile you because they come forth from the heart. So take heed to your heart, the scripture says. Hallelujah. So whosoever abideth in him Whosoever abideth in Jesus Christ sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Okay? So if you're a sinner, if this is what you do, if you can't control yourself and you just sin all day, every day, then you have not seen Jesus Christ nor known him. This is what the scripture says. If that offends you, I have no apology. Seek God about it, and he'll show you. Now maybe you're religious and you've gone to your denomination for decades, all your life. And this is offending you. Well, think about it for a second. If what, if what I'm saying is offending you, it's God's Word. So if God's Word is offending you, don't get mad at me and turn this video off. Get on your knees and seek God and ask Him why this is offending you. And He'll show you if you really want to know. Let's go on. Little children, verse 7, 1 John 3, 7. Let no man deceive you. Okay, don't be deceived. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Okay, there's a couple ways the word he is used here. He that doeth righteousness, which means whatever person doeth righteousness, is righteous, even as he, Jesus Christ, is righteous. Okay, so two personal pronouns that are talking about two different people, or groups of people. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Well, Jesus Christ is righteous. He never sinned. There's no sin in him. So, consequently, he that doeth righteousness is righteous like him. In other words, a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, or one who abides in Jesus Christ, is going to be righteous. He's going to be doing righteous things and not doing unrighteous things because he is a disciple of Jesus Christ, the righteous one. Jesus Christ is righteous, so those who follow him and walk in his steps are righteous. That's how it works. 
you're not righteous just because you said a prayer in a church one day and some pastor said that you're righteous. You're righteous if you live in a righteous manner. If you live above sin. Okay? Praise the Lord. It's just like your well, it's just like the painter parable that I told you. If you're not a, if you're not a painter, then you're not a painter. If you pick up a paintbrush and make a couple strokes on a fence one day, that doesn't make you a painter. Okay? So if you're a sinner, you're not a Christian. If you're a Christian, you're not a sinner. Verse 8. He that committed sin is of the devil. Wow, that's a bold statement, isn't it? But it's true. He that committed sin is of the devil. Now it doesn't say that he that maketh a mistake and committeth a sin is of the devil. It says he that committeth sin is of the devil. This, this is to say that he that continually, as a lifestyle, committed sin, he is of the devil. Of course, because the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. And that's what he did. He destroyed the works of the devil. What does that mean? It means that you can be free from the power of Satan. You can be free from the power of sin. You can be free. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. This is what the scripture says. That was Romans 8, 4. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Verse 9. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. Okay, born of God. What does that mean? It means you're born again. It means the word of God, which is the seed of life, has come into your heart and put forth life there, brought forth life there. Just as when a man and a woman come into covenant of marriage and they come into the marriage bed and the seed of the man enters into the womb of the woman and the womb of the woman brings forth life, a living creature begins to exist in her womb. When the word of God, which is the seed, comes into you and you have such a heart that is considered good ground to receive that seed, then that word springs forth into life inside you and you can see the kingdom of God. And when that happens, you're commanded to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And that's called being born of water and of the Spirit. And when that happens, you're no longer a sinner. You're a saint. You're washed from your old sins. And you have power to live above sin now so that sin is no longer your master. And you have the Holy One living inside of you to lead you and guide you so that you can abide in Him and keep His ways and walk after His Word. And if you're abiding in Him, then you're not sinning. Praise the Lord. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. What does this mean? If you're born of God, it doesn't mean that it's impossible for you to make a mistake and commit a sin. Because later on in, the gospel, in, in this letter from John, it says, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Okay. But what this means is that if you're a Christian... If you're in Jesus Christ and you commit a sin, God is going to immediately let you know because the Spirit of Christ which is in you is going, to, is going to prick your heart to the point where you won't be able to get anything done or anything accomplished until you get on your knees, get it confessed to God, get it behind you so you can move on. Okay? You're not going to be able to just continue to sin and sin and sin. And if you do, if you resist the, the, the Spirit of God in you, and you continue to sin and sin and sin and continue to, to not heed his warnings, there will come a time when you won't be able to hear his voice anymore. He'll take his hand off of you and you'll perish. Okay, there is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. Okay, This is why God told Jeremiah not even to pray for the people of Israel and Judah at a certain point because they had rejected him so many times to the point where he just decided to leave them, to let them go. Okay. But... Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest. You can see them. In this you can see the difference between the children of God and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Okay. Neither he that loveth not his brother is, is the word of God, but I'm going to... I'm going to leave that for a minute because it's, it's heading into another subject. But in this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Period. Okay? No matter how many years you've been going to church, no matter how many times you've accepted Jesus Christ into your heart, no matter how involved you are in the, in the activities of your church, or how many times your pastor has told you that you're righteous, if you're not doing righteousness, you're not righteous. 
It's just that simple. If you're doing things that are evil, you're not righteous. The definition of someone who's righteous is someone who does righteousness. Okay? It's just that simple. So if you're a Christian, then you do righteously. If you're a Christian, you're in Jesus Christ. He is in you. You're his disciple. You abide in him. You walk after his word. And if you're walking after his word, you're not sinning. If you're walking not after the flesh, but after the spirit, then you're fulfilling the righteousness of the law. Okay? It's not some magical thing whereby you can just live in sin and all of a sudden declare yourself uh, righteous because the pastor said, well, you, you believe in Jesus, so you're righteous now. No, you're not righteous because some guy in the costume tells you that you're righteous because you did some ritual. You're righteous when you obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, have power over sin, and abide in Jesus Christ to walk as he walked. Because he that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So you see, you're either a sinner or a saint. You're not both. You can't be both. If you're a sinner, then you're not a saint. And you need to be saved from your sins so that you can inherit the kingdom of God. If you're a saint, then you're not a sinner. Now, you may have sinned recently. You may have committed a, a, a sin. You may have made a mistake and fallen into temptation and committed a sin. If that's the case, then confess it to the Lord Jesus Christ and, and, and repent from it. And the Bible says that if we confess our sins, we, the church of Jesus Christ, those who have been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if you were washed from your sins by repentance and baptism in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost, if you were washed from your sins by obeying that gospel and you have committed a sin which has separated you from God, then you confess your sin and repent from it and God will not only forgive that sin, but he will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And if you have been cleansed from all unrighteousness, then what are you? You're righteous. Praise the Lord. And as long as you continue to walk in the light as Jesus Christ is in the light, then we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Word of God means what it says. And if you read the Word of God and you have to excuse certain verses of the Scripture because it doesn't fit in with the theology that you were taught, then I encourage you to seek the Lord and His Word and reject the theology that you were taught so that you can believe the Word of God. You should be able to read this letter, 1 John, just as it was a letter written from your uncle to you. Because this was a letter written from an apostle of Jesus Christ to other disciples of Jesus Christ. And it's not a theological masterpiece to be figured out and, and we should have to read commentaries to understand what it means. It's a very simple letter that was written from one man of God to some other people of God. And if you're one of the people of God, then it's just a very simple letter and it's perfectly simple to understand. So I recommend that you stay in First John. Not that it's any better than any other book of the Bible, but maybe for right now, because you're watching this video and maybe you're struggling with these things, Stay in 1 John, and 1 John will lead you to other parts of the Bible as well. And read the scripture and just believe what it says. And if you have a problem with part of the scripture, then don't get mad at me because I've read it to you, or don't get mad at God because he said it. But seek God and say, why does this make me mad? Why does this hurt me? Why does it not fit in with what I was taught? Show me, Lord. In Jesus' name, he will. He will. One of the things I love most about the Lord Jesus Christ is the fact that He is alive and you can ask Him questions and He will answer you. And He will lead you and guide you. And He'll give you His Spirit to lead you and guide you into all truth. I was reading the first chapter of the Proverbs today and He said, Blessed be the name of the Lord. He said, I will pour out my Spirit unto you. Hallelujah. Because, wait a minute, wait a second. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my Spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Um, Proverbs chapter 1 verse 23 that's the Lord's desire it's not his desire that you should perish in your sin under the ministry of a false preacher in a denomination it's the Lord's desire that you would be born of his word and that you would allow him to teach you his ways so that you can be redeemed from the power of sin and live as a saint it is possible to do so no matter what your denomination has taught you, no matter what your grandparents have taught you no matter what the television has taught you no matter what anything else has taught you the Word of God is truth, and the Gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes it. And what is salvation? It is when you are saved from the power of sin, so that you don't have to have sin as your master anymore, so that you can live above sin, so that you can do the things that please God, so that you can be righteous, 
so that you can enter into his holy kingdom, because the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, the unjust shall not stand in the judgment in the congregation of saints. Only those that are going to inherit the kingdom of God are the saints. Those are the only ones that will inherit the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is holy, and if you're not holy, you're not going to enter in. And don't fool yourself into thinking that you're holy or that you're a saint or that you're righteous just because your, your, your pastor has told you that you are, even though you know that you're a sinner. If you're a sinner, you're not a saint. And if you're a sinner, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God unless you come to the Lord Jesus Christ and be washed from your sins and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost and God makes you a saint. And then it is fulfilled as it is written in the scripture, the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Because God will make you a saint so that you're not a slave to sin anymore, so that you don't have to live in sin anymore, so that you can live a right and a holy life and honor your Father in this world as a light in the world. That's what he called you to be. A light that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Blessed be the name of the Lord, and blessed be his words that have come forth this day.